imagine that you have a large competition to perform and once the competition is done you want kubernetes to stop pods automatically so here you are talking about running pods temporarily till the task is completed and that's one scenario in another scenario imagine that where you want to take the backup of database every day at 5 am est so here you are talking about repeating a task at a scheduled time every day so how can you achieve these two tasks inside kubernetes hello and welcome to jobs my name is srinath challa i'm a certified kubernetes administrator in next few minutes i'll try my best to explain what is job what does it do and what are the types of it but before you watch this it is good to have a basic understanding of what is kubernetes pods and kubectl in case if you need a help with that please do check the links in the description below so without any further delay let's take a look at the things you will be learning as part of this video this presentation is divided into two sections in first section we will discuss the concept around jobs first we will discuss what is a job and next we will discuss what are the different types of jobs so that's about the part 1 and coming to the part 2 we will review the jobs demo we are about to perform on live kubernetes cluster in advance so this will help you better understand when you watch actually doing it live in this review demo i'll show you what goes inside job manifest file then we'll create the job and we'll display and validate the objects to make sure it is created after that we will test the job deployment to make sure it is working as it should be and finally we'll clean up what we have created in this demo in case if you are looking for actual demo performing evo steps on live kubernetes cluster then you can refer to the link in the description below and now let's get started with what is a job and what are the different types of jobs in part 1 so what is a job job is a controller which supervises pods for carrying out certain task at a high level jobs are two types one is run to completion which is simply called as jobs and other is scheduled which is known as cron jobs and now let's discuss about these two jobs briefly in this slide first run to completion jobs run to completion job is simply referred as jobs this is primarily used for performing batch processing so as soon as we submit this job manifest file to the api server pod will kick in and it will execute a task and when the task is completed it will shut down by itself so it's called as run to completion job here controller will wait for the exit code 0 and the moment pod gets the exit code 0 then job will move away so once the job is completed pods will move from running state to shutdown state here kubernetes will not automatically delete these pods we have to to do this manually here pods in shutdown state is not going to occupy any space or consume any resources and there is no more life to it and that's about the run till completion job and next comes the another type of job which is familiar to most of us which is called as scheduled job and there is another name to it which is called as cron jobs in case if you are familiar with linux or unix most likely you will be familiar with a file called cron type file where we define an entry for task this task is scheduled to kick in at a certain time and perform the assigned job here these cron jobs in kubernetes are similar to that let's imagine that every one hour you want a pod to kick in aggregate all the logs then zip it and move it to the google cloud storage or amazon s3 and finally delete all the log files on the disk the purpose of this job is to basically perform the clean up and free the disk space and repeat it every one hour so that's about the scheduled or cron job as this video is primarily focused on run to completion 
as known as just a job. So now let's discuss more in depth on that now. So when you submit job manifest file to Kubernetes API server, then it will create one or more pods depending upon the config in the manifest file. So once the job is scheduled, the controller on the master node will wait for the pod to get successfully terminated, which means containers will return an exit code zero. Then the controller will take the will take the pod off the radar. So when job completes, no more pods are created, but pods are also not deleted either. Keeping them around allows you to still view the logs of completed pods to check for errors, warnings, or other diagnostic output. The job object also remains after it is completed so that we can view the status. So it is up to the user to delete old jobs after noting their status. So when you delete the job using kubectl, all the pods associated with that job will get deleted too. Next, there are some jobs which are long running durable execution. So before the execution completes, there will be chances where the pod or the node where the pod is running might get failed. Then in that case, job control will automatically reschedule these pods onto another healthy node and the job resumes the execution from there again. Here, Kubernetes is not aware of what you're doing inside the pod, but it is your responsibility to ensure applying the retry logic or you making sure that application is aware of how to handle these restarts so that the logic has to be built into the job. Here, the Kubernetes will ensure the job continues even if the pod or the node fails. So that's very important aspect. So you don't have to worry about the infrastructure, but you are only worried about the logic of handling your jobs within the pod. Next, a job can also be used to run multiple pods in parallel. For example, one of the use cases of running multiple pods in parallel when processing the messages in message queue scenario. Let's say you're running RabbitMQ and you have a lot of messages flowing into it to be processed. In case if you have only one pod processing all the time, then it's going to take quite a bit of time. In that case, you need multiple pods running in parallel. Then it will process all the messages in the message queue in parallel. Next, you can increase or decrease running pods using kubectl, scale up or scale down commands accordingly. To run multiple pods in parallel, we need to define the parallelism value on how many pods you want to run parallel in job manifest file. So to summarize this, pods will execute a task and then it will shut down by itself. And that's one of the reasons why it is called as run till completion. And now let's see some of the use cases of run till completion job. And coming to the first use case, imagine that you need to bring up a database and bring it to a state where it is more useful, where you can start talking to it through your application. Once the database is up and running, you don't need a pod anymore. In that scenario, run till completion jobs helps to terminate the pod after the task is completed. And coming to the second use case, I guess most of you are familiar with message queuing system, where there will be a multiple workers to process the messages in message queue. As you can see in the diagram, there are producers and consumers. Between them, there is a worker queue. Here, producers will come up as a job and will inject multiple messages into this queue and goes out. And then consumers will kick in. So one consumer is going to pick up one messages and finishes the task and then goes off the radar. Remaining all the messages will be stacked up in messages queue. So in order to process the messages in message queue, you need to have a multiple consumers. In Kubernetes, you can create a job with multiple pods. So each pod can process the messages and goes off. Run till completion job is ideal solutions for this kind of scenario. So that's about the use cases of run till completion job. And now it's time to see what goes inside to this run till completion job manifest file. We'll see that in next part, which is review demo. Here in this part two, we'll review the demo we are able to perform on live Kubernetes cluster in advance. In this review demo, 
I'll show you what goes inside the job manifest file. Then we'll create the job and we'll display and validate the jobs to make sure it has created. After that, we'll test the job deployment to make sure it is working as it should be. Finally, we'll clean up the objects what we have created in this demo. And now, let's get started with creating a job manifest file. Like any other Kubernetes object config file, job spec file contains four top sections, API version, kind, metadata, and spec. First, API version. Job is part of initial batch processing API release. So its API version is batch v1. Then kind. Kind of the object we are creating here is job. So we have it here. Then follows the metadata. Two things that goes under this metadata are name and labels. Name of the job in this example is countdown. Then labels. Labels are optional. We can define the labels for this job if needed here. But for now, we'll skip it. And finally, we have the spec section. This spec section contains the pod template except the API version and kind of the pod. Other than that, this is exactly same as pod config. So we define the pod config under this template section. As you see, metadata and spec are two general sections that goes inside the pod template. In metadata section, we define the name of the pod we are about to create. In this example, as a countdown. Next thing we are going to define is pod configuration. We define that under spec section. In this example, we'll have one CentOS container image. This container will print the numbers one to nine and then dies. And once it is died, it will not restart. And that's it. And now let's go ahead and create this. So to create the countdown job config, we need to run the kubectl create command followed by f option and the manifest file. Now to print list of all jobs inside Kubernetes cluster, we use the kubectl get jobs. As you can see, job is processed successfully and most likely it is completed. So to make sure, let's check the status of pods. You can do that by using kubectl get pods. And this will print all the pods inside the Kubernetes cluster. From that output, it is confirmed that pod status is completed. But now, how do we see the job output? For that same reason, even though pod is executed successfully, but it will be still there around without deleting automatically. Now, to check the output, we need to find the pod logs. We can do that by using kubectl logs followed by the pod name. There you see the sequence from 9 to 1. Now, if you ever need to check the complete details of a specific pod, we need to run the kubectl describe command. We'll see that in the next slide. kubectl describe command is used to print all the details of a specific object. This output will describe the complete details of the job. Here, you can see when the job is started, then the status of the pod, and finally, list of the events related to the job. This is basically used in case of troubleshooting. So that's about the kubectl describe command. So to recap, we have created the job, then we displayed and described the job object, and finally, we tested the job. So these are the some of the must known operations of a job inside Kubernetes. And now, it's time to clean up the objects we have created. We'll discuss about that in next slide. There is one object we created in this video, and that is job. We created the job, then job created the pod based on the pod spec we mentioned in the manifest file. Pods are the actual workhorses which will complete the assigned task. As we know, required task is completed now, and now let's go ahead and delete the job we have created. Command to delete the job is kubectl delete jobs followed by job name which is countdown in this case. So after you run that command, you should see the job has been deleted. Point to note here is, if you delete the job, as a result, job will make sure it deletes the pod it has created. So we don't have to manually delete the pod. Again, let's check the status of the pods using kubectl get pods 
to make sure there are no pods related to the job. You can do that by running kubectl get pods. The output confirms that there are no pods running at this moment. And now it's time to recap everything we discussed in this video so far. Coming to the summary, first we discussed about what are jobs in Kubernetes. So job is a controller in Kubernetes which supervises pods for carrying out certain tasks. Next, we discussed there are two types of jobs. One is rental completion job, which is simply called as jobs. Another is scheduled job, which is also called as cron jobs. And rental completion job is primarily used for performing batch processing. Pods which are created as part of this will get shut down as soon as the task is completed. And coming to the scheduled jobs, which are also called as cron jobs, are used to perform repetitive tasks at a scheduled time. And that's about the part one. And coming to the part two, we first discussed about what goes inside the job manifest file. Then we created the job deployment. After that, we displayed and validated the objects to make sure it has created successfully. After that, we tested the job deployment to make sure it is working as it should be. And yes, it did. And finally, we cleaned up what we have created in this demo. And now coming up next, actual demo of job. In the demo, we'll perform the exact steps that we discussed in this review demo section. A link to that video is provided in the description below. And finally, thank you so much for watching this and I hope to see you in the next video.